by talking about coterminals. Given an angle, an angle T, a coterminal is an angle other than T that brings you to the same place. That brings you to the same place as angle T. Now, exactly what does that mean? For example, if this were the angle T, of course it brings you right here, a coterminal is an angle that brings you to the same place. This is a coterminal, or you could have continued and gone around another time. That's a coterminal. But let's look at this more carefully. Well, first we went to T, and then we went around 360 degrees. That was the first place I stopped, or we could have continued and gone around another 360 degrees. Or, if we like, we can go around another 360 degrees. If you take angle T and you add 360 degrees, or 2 times 360 degrees, or you add 3 times 360 degrees, etc., you get back to T. But that's not the only way to get to angle T. If this is angle T, well, you can go to angle T, and then you can take away 360. That brings you back there. Or, you can go to angle T and take away 360, and take away another 360, and you can keep taking away 360s all day long. It brings you right back to the same angle. So, basically, you can, given an angle, you can add or subtract any multiple to 360 or 2 pi, and you'll get, this, get back to the same place. That is, given an angle, a coterminal can be obtained by adding any number of 360s or taking away any number of 360. One last point I want to make. In that given angle, it didn't have to be just up to here. The original angle, T, could have gone right up to there. And then to find the coterminal, you can add 360 or take away 360. You can add another 360 You get back to the same place. Or you can take the way 360 and get back to the same place. Add or subtract any number of 360s you choose. And you will have a cold terminal. And of course, the original angle T did not have to be in the first quadrant. Okay, so in this exercise, I'm going to ask to find 2, find 2, Mm, two positive coterminals as well as and two negative coterminals. Find two positive and two negative. Okay, for each given angle. For each given angle. So, if I give you 60 degrees, well, you can add 360 and you'll get 420. That's one answer, it's positive. You can add another 360 or you can add 1080. 1080 is a multiple of 360. They don't have to be consecutive. That is, the answers that you get 
two students who do these problems correctly, they may not get the same answer. For example, another, so here are two positive numbers, two positive coterminals. Another student, to convince you, 360 times 3 is 0, 18, 1080. Another student might like 1080. So I added 360 three times. I get 1140. That's one answer. You get another 1080. You get 2220, I guess. That's another answer. Those are two. These here, this one and this one, those are another two positive coterminals to 60 degrees. But you do not have to do this because we've already found two positive coterminals. Now we need to find some negatives. You can take away enough 360s to make a negative. For example, if I take away 360, I'll get to negative 300 degrees. That's a negative angle, so that's one answer. And you take away another 360, for example, you get negative 660. That's the second negative. So here's one set of answers. 420 right here. 780, those are positive coterminals, and these are negative coterminals. You can add or subtract any multiple of the 360 that you choose. What if I give you 1,460 degrees? Now you can add 360, that will be positive, but how about we take away 360? Let me just think a moment. I meant to say 1440. Oh no, 1460, that's what I meant, I'm sorry. If you take away 360, you get 1100. Well that's a positive angle, so that's one answer for the positive. If you take away 360 again, you get 740 degrees. That's another positive coterminal. For example, if you take away 360 again, you get 380. That's not negative. And if you take away 360 again, that's not negative. It, it's 20 degrees. Well, now if you take away 360, you get negative 340 degrees. That's negative. And if you take away 360 again, you get negative 700. That's negative. You know, you didn't have to keep taking away 360. For example, you can take away 360 a couple of times to get positive. That's positive. Take away 360 again, you get 740. That's positive. But that number is more than 360. Now we want to get negatives. For for a number to be negative, if you take away 360, you have to be less than 360. If you have more than $360 in the bank, and you take away 360, you'll have something left over. It might be a nickel, it might be a million dollars. If you have more than 360, and you take away 360, you'll have something left. But if you don't have 360 in the bank, and somehow you convince them to let you take out 360, then you're negative. Okay, since this, we're going to have to take away, since that's more than 360, we're going to have to take away a number of 360s. And it might be worth knowing that 360 times 3 happens to be 1080. Now, if you have 740 and you take away more than 740, like 1080, you're going to be negative. In this case, negative 340, which is cool because it's negative. And then you can take away 1080 again to get another negative. So I'll just take away 360. And that gives you negative 700. You can add or subtract not just 360s, but any multiples of 360s. I mean, you might want to say, well, 360 times 10, 3600. And most probably, adding or subtracting 3600s will give you a positive. If you add 3,600, I bet you you'll get positives. If you take away 3,600, you'll get negatives. Okay, so if you really hate these types of problems, 
my advice might be just add 3,600. Take away 3,600. And why don't we do that? Let's add and subtract 3,600. So the given angle is 1,460. Find the positive one. Well, if you add 3,600, more likely than not, it'll be positive. So there's one answer. And if you add 3,600 to that, you'll get 8,660, and that's positive, and that half is done. That half is done. Now, if you have 1,460, and you take away 3,600, I don't know, you'll get 1,140. 1140, negative. And if you take, so that's one answer for negative. If you take away another 3600, you will have taken away 4740. You just have to know how to add and subtract. If you add 3600, it'll turn positive. If you take away 3600, it'll turn negative. Now, let's just play this same game and let's play it in radians. Remember, 2 pi is 360 degrees. So you can add any multiple of the 2 pi. 2 or subtract any multiple of the 2 pi. 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi. So for example, if, if you have 11 pi over 6. Well, you should think of 2 pi as something over 6. That way when you add and subtract, the denominators will be the same. Well, 6 times 2 is 12, so 6 times 2 pi is 12 pi. This is just another way of writing 2 pi. So I will add 12 pi over 6. The denominators are the same and the numerator. That's one answer. I'll take that answer, which is positive, and I'll add 2 pi. That's 12 pi over 6. And I'll get 35 pi over 6. There are my two positive answers. If I take 11 pi over 6, 6 goes into 11 less than 2 times. That is, this is less than 2 pi. If you have less than 2 pi, then you take away 2 pi, it'll turn negative. But once again, I'm going to write my 2 pi with a 6 on the bottom. Because in subtraction, in subtraction, if the denominators are the same, you just keep it. Subtract the numerator. 11 take away 10 is 1. 11 take away 12 is negative 1. Negative 1 pi. That's one answer. You have negative 1 pi over 6, and you take away 12 pi over 6, you take away 1 pi, and then you take away 12 pi, you took away 13 pi, which is a negative number. Again, if you multiply by 10, you'll get 20 pi. I assure you, if you ever subtract 20 pi, more likely than not, you'll get positive answers and negative answers. If you add 20 pi, you'll get positive. If you take away 20 pi, you'll get negative. And if you want to see it, remember, in this problem, you want to write it over 6. 6 times 20 is 120. So it's 120 pi. If you take 11 pi over 6, and you add 120 pi over 6, boy, is that going to be positive. 131 pi over 6. If you take that answer and you add a multiple of 2 pi, that's a, like 120 pi over 6, which is 20 pi, you'll get 251 pi over 6. Here are two positive numbers. Uh, if you take 11 pi over 6, now to get negative, you take away 20 pi or 10 pi if you prefer. Yeah, 10 pi is great. You get 120 pi over 6, that's 20 pi. And you get ne negative 109 pi over 6. That's the coterminal. If you now go, let me 
do it on the top, please. If you now take negative 109 pi over 6, and you take away 120 pi over 6, you will have taken away 229 pi's over 6. So here, here, and here are two coterm negative coterminals, 2, 11 pi over 6, and here are two positives. Just add two pi's. See, sometimes you may have to add a lot of two pi's. That's why adding 20 pi's, that is 2 pi's 10 pi, 10 times, add 2 pi's 10 times, that is add 20 pi's, that will get you out of a lot of touchy situations. If you have negative, let me put it up there, if you have negative 15 pi over 2, well, you have to add a lot of 2 pi's. 2 pi, I want to write with a 2 on the bottom. 2 times 2 pi gives me 4 pi. So I can add 4 pi over 2. The denominators are the same. Negative 11 plus, excuse me, negative 15 plus 4 is negative 11. He has a negative coterminal. You can now take negative 11 pi over 2 and add 4 pi over 2. That, and that gives you negative 11 pi over 2. Negative 11 plus 4 is negative 7. Here's another negative coterminal. And if you take that answer and you add 2 pi, that's 4 pi over 2, you still get negative. Okay, then turn positive. Well, I mean, you, you can just sit here and keep adding 2 pi until it gets positive. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. 1 pi over 2. That's a positive. And if you take pi over 2 and you add 2 pi, that's 4 pi over 2, you will get 5 pi over 2. Another positive coterminal. So here we have two positive coterminals, and here we have our two negative coterminals. And here, we added 2 pi, but it didn't help. Okay, and if it's very negative, you may have a lot of these situations where it's they don't help. Or if it's very positive. You keep taking away 2 pi's, but if you have 100 pi's, you have to take away 2 pi's a lot before it turns negative. Okay, so sometimes you might just want to add 20 pi's just add 20 pi's. A large number of 2 pi's. And don't change these to degrees. It's not going to be much more friendly. I'd rather add 2, like 2 pi, than add 360 to 360. I'd rather add 2 pi than 360. Okay, so, coterminals differ by multiples to 360. All coterminals, well, let me not say that. Say it that way. Given two coterminals, their angles differ by multiples of 360 degrees or 2 pi. For example, 30 degrees, and I add 360, I get 390. So let me write that. I get 390. These two angles differ by a multiple of 360. If I added 
720 gets 360 plus 360. So I add 720 and get 750. These two angles differ by 720. That is, if you were to subtract them, 750 minus 30, you'll get 720, which is a multiple of 360. If you subtract these angles, 390 minus 30, you'll get 360, which is a multiple of 360. 360 times 1. Three, excuse me, 720 is 2 times 360. So you have 20 degrees and 1080. Uh, I don't like that. Uh, I meant to say 1100. You have 20 degrees and 1100. Well, you should be able to take away 20 from 1100. You get 1080. And would you believe that 360 goes in there three times? That is, the difference is a multiple of 360. The difference, 1080, is 3 times 360. 3 times 360 is 1080. The difference, coterminals differ by a multiple of 360 or 2 pi. So, an exercise you might see is determine if these two angles are coterminals. Negative 50 and 310. Are they coterminals? Well, they are 50 degrees and 310 coterminals. I mean, obviously the answer is yes or no. Well, you subtract them. You write down one of the angles, you write down the other angle, and you denote your subtracting. It's customary that when you have two symbols next to one another, like those two minus signs, you isolate them by brackets. But that's no big deal. There's a rule that says that you can change subtraction to addition or addition to subtraction, providing that you change the sign of the second number. Well, 310 minus negative 50 happens to be 310 plus 50 or 360. And 360 is a multiple of 360. It's 1 times 360. If I give you negative 20 and 1060 degrees, are these coterminals? So the answer is over here, yes. Are these two angles on the bottom coterminals? Well, all you have to do is subtract them. The larger angle minus the smaller angle. Don't feed. This is the larger angle. That's the minus sign. If you only write 20, that's not the smaller angle. The smaller angle is negative 20. There's a rule that says you can change it to addition so long as you change the sign of the second number. 1060 plus 20 is 1080. And 1080 is 3 times 360. So the answer is yes. So multiple of 360. Not every time when you subtract two angles do you get a multiple of 360. For example, if one angle is 380 degrees and the other angle is 20 degrees. Are these coterminals? Well, 380 minus, oh, let's make this 120, minus 120 degrees, this is 260 degrees. And 260 is not a multiple of 360. 0 times 360 is 0. 1 times 360 is 360. We skip 260. The answer is no in this case. 380 minus 120 is 
not a multiple of 360. Now, 2 pi, really friendly number. The pi just tags along. The number is really 2. 2 pi times 0 is 0 pi. Clearly, it's more than 360. 
Well, you can take away 360, and that gives you, I guess, 390. Well, that's not between 0 and 360. So you can take away another 360. And there is an answer that's between 0 and 360. If you're slick and you realize, you know what, I can take away two 360s, or 720s, you'll get the answer in one shot. But nonetheless, the answer is 30. If by mistake, and this is a big mistake, if you take away too many 360s, like 1080, well, again, you should realize if you take away more than what you're starting with, you will be negative. It's not the worst problem. You're negative and back 360. And you will get 30 degrees. You can keep adding and subtracting 360s all day long until you finally get an answer between 0 and 360. give you, say, negative 810. Negative 810. To turn positive, if you owe the bank $810, that's why we have negative, because you owe them. If you owe somebody $810, to turn positive, you have to give them back more than 810. So we need to look at the 360 table. 360 times 1 obviously isn't more than 810. 360 times 2 is only 720. But here it is. 360 times 3 is the first time you get more than 810. If you add 1080, you will get 270 degrees, which is between 0 and 360. That is, this is a coterminal, because I added a multiple of 360, so it's a coterminal, and it's between 0 and 360. You, you don't want to stay here and add 360, and I guess you get negative 450 degrees, and then add 360 again, and I guess you get negative 90 degrees, and then you add 360 again, and you get your 270. You don't want to do it that way, but you can. You can. Okay, let's play the same game with, with radian. If I give you 7 pi, well, again, you can take away 2 pi, or 4 pi, or 6 pi, or 8 pi. You want to take away the most number of pi as you can and stay positive. If you take away 8 pi and you only have 7 pi, you're negative. But that's not true with 6 pi. If you take away 6 pi, you'll get 1 pi. Here's the answer. Take away enough pi so you the, the most number of pi or even pi as you can so you still have something left. Or you just exactly zero. That is, if you have 6 pi, take away 6 pi and say the answer is zero. I did say the answer can be between zero and 360. Now, if I give you 81 pi, you should take away 80 pi. And then you're left with 1 pi. 80 is an even number of pi. That's how you study this. You can add and subtract an even number of pies. And you can go 81, 79, 77, 75, 73, 71, and keep going until you say an answer between 0 and 2. Okay, well, what if I give you 7 pi over 2? Well, if you think about it, 7 over 2 is 3 and a half. Well, if you have 3 and a half, you can take away 2, but you can't take away 4. If you only have 3 and a half dollars, you can't give me 4 dollars. So, 
you take away 2 pi. But I'm going to write 2 pi as 4 over 2, 4 pi over 2. The denominator say 2, and 7 pi minus 4 pi is 3 pi. So the answer is 3 pi over 2. Okay, just know that 7 divided by 2 is 3 and a half. You can take away 2 pi. Can you take, can you take away 2 pi? Yes. Can you take away 4 pi? No. Then not take away 2 pi. Let me stretch that a little bit more. What if you have 15 pi over 2? What if you have 15 pi over 2? Well, you should first do 2 into 15 and realize it's 7 and a half. Okay? So we have 7 and a half pi. Let's just talk about 7 and a half. Can you take away 2? Yes. Can you take away 4? Yes. Can you take away 6 from 7 and a half? Yes. Can you take away 8? No. So you want to take away 6 pi. You want to take away 6 pi. But you'd rather write 6 pi with the 2 in the bottom. Because in subtraction, you'd like for the denominators to be the same. 2 times 6 pi is 12 pi. That is 12 pi divided by 2 is 6 pi. 12 over 2 is 6. So you take away 12 pi over 2. The denominator is the same. 15 pi is minus 12 pi is 3 pi. There's the answer. 1 and a half pi. 3 pi over 2. You can add or subtract any number of 2 pi. 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi. And you want to end up with more than 0 pi for less than 2 pi.
circumference of the whole circle. But we only want, and in our case, it's 2, two times r is 16 times pi. In our case, the circumference is 16 pi. That is, if you don't know what I'm talking about, the circumference is all the way around. How far is it all the way around? Okay, it's 16 pi. But we only want part of it. What part do we want? What part do we want? We want 60 degrees out of 360. The zeros cancel. It turns out that six, one, 6 goes into 6 one time, and 6 goes into 36 six times. We actually want one-sixth of this. We want one-sixth of 16 pi, which happens to be 8 pi over 3, because 16 over 6, 2 goes into both of these 8 and 3 times. It's 8 pi over 3. So we don't even have to convert to radians. If you wanted to, you could have said that 60 degrees is 180 degrees divided by 3. So S is R theta. R was 8. Theta is pi over 3. And you get the same answer we just got, 8 pi over 3. Okay, let's do that once again. If you don't, if you have it in, rate, in degrees, you can still do it. You just take the correct portion of the whole circumference. You take the correct portion of the whole circumference. For example, you have 90 degrees. 90 degrees. And somebody asks you how long that is, and they tell you their radius is 16 centimeters, for example. Well, isn't this, as I want to look at, isn't this a quarter of the, of the whole thing? So actually, you want 90 degrees out of 360 of the whole circumference. And the whole circumference is 2 times pi times 16 centimeters. Well, actually, units cancel. The degrees cancel. 90 goes into 91 times. It goes into 364 times. And this 4 in the bottom happens to go into this 4 in the top. 4 goes in the bottom one time, and 4 goes into the top 16 times. And what you're left with is 1 times 2 times 4, which is 8, times pi, which is 8 pi, times centimeters. 8 pi centimeters divided by 1. So the answer is just 8 pi radians. You could say that 90 degrees is 180 degrees over 2. And then S is equal to R theta. R is 16 centimeters. R theta, the angle, is pi over 2. 2 goes into 16 8 times. 8 times pi is 8 pi times centimeters. 8 pi centimeters. Same answer. So you don't, I guess I'm a little bit mistaken. If you're going to use this formula, theta should be in radians. But you don't have to use that formula. You can use the circumference formula and take the proportion of it that you want. You want 90 out of the 360 degrees. Now, we can play the game backwards. What if you want to find the angle? What if you want to find the angle? What if I give you an angle? I don't tell you what it is, but I tell you the radius is 5, and the portion of the arc is 10. And you're sort of saying, 
meters, 5 meters, 10 meters, 5 inches, 10 inches, 5 miles, 10 miles. So we know that S is R times theta, and we want to solve for theta. Well, divide by R. Divide by R. Turns out that theta is S over R. And S is 10, and R is 5, so theta is 2. 2 radians, please.
don't want the whole circle. We want part of it. We want 30 out of 360 of it. And it turns out that you can cross out the zeros. And 3 goes into 3 1 time. And 3 goes into 36 12 times. But that's exactly what we had before. We have 1 times pi times 5 meters squared over 12. Other than switching the order of those two, that's exactly what I have here. I mean, here I have 2 times 6, but that is 12. For example, 5 squared is 25, times 1 is still 25, times pi is 25 pi, times meter squared is meter squared over 12. Same answer that we got up there. So, you can convert or not convert. Just remember, if you use the formula 1 half r squared theta, theta must be in radians. Any formula that pretty much uses theta in it, it must be in radians. Somebody can ask you to find the sine, the sine at 30 degrees, but that's not a formula. Okay, that finishes up this section on angle measures.